You might think Chevy's legendary 350 V8 engine was banned. Not quite. The truth is even more shocking. It wasn't removed because it failed, but because it was too good, forcing GM to quietly replace it with a new generation. Today's story isn't just about a roaring block of metal. It's about legacy, engineering, and why millions still swear by the 350 V8 to this day. Let's rewind to 1955, the year Chevrolet reshaped automotive history. At the time, most American cars were heavy, bulky, and performance wasn't exactly a priority. But Chevy wanted to change the game. Under the leadership of engineer Ed Cole, they introduced something truly revolutionary, a 265 cubic inch small block Vive 8. It was smaller, lighter, and easier to build than anything before it. But the real shock was just how much power it packed for its size. Chevy didn't just build an engine, they built the foundation for a V8 revolution. This small block quickly found its way into cars like the Corvette, Bel Air, and other sporty GM models. And most importantly, it was extremely upgrade friendly, a trait that made it beloved in American car culture. This wasn't just the start of a successful engine line. It was the root, the origin story, of the legendary Chevy 350 yet to come. After over a decade of perfecting the small block, in 1967, Chevrolet played its trump card. And that card was the 350 V8. For the first time, this new engine made its debut under the hood of the 1967 Camaro SS, Chevy's bold new muscle car built to go head-to-head -head with the Ford Mustang. With a displacement of 350 cubic inches, about 5.7 liters, this engine made waves. It wasn't just powerful. It struck a perfect balance of size, weight, and torque. Not as bulky as a big block, but still capable of tearing up the pavement. Chevy quickly saw its potential, and soon the 350 found its way into other iconic models like the Corvette, Chevelle, Nova, El Camino, Impala, and Caprice. The 350 ecosystem had officially arrived. What set the 350 apart wasn't just raw power. It was the smooth driving feel, the signature growl of its exhaust note, and an upgrade potential that made gearheads drool. It became the soul of American muscle, earning the love of both young drivers and veteran mechanics alike. After proving itself in the Camaro and Corvette, the 350 was no longer just a star performer. It became the default choice for nearly every type of vehicle Chevy built. You'd find it in aggressive Chevelle SS models, in luxury Impalas, in the hybrid El Camino, and especially in pickup trucks like the C10. It was powerful, reliable, and easy to fix. The very definition of a trustworthy workhorse. But the story didn't stop there. The 350 began to break boundaries. It wasn't just limited to Chevy cars anymore. People started swapping 350s into hot rods, drag racers, off-road Jeeps, even boats, buggies, and full-on custom steel frame creations. Why? Because it was cheap, easy to find, easy to modify, and easy to repair. And most importantly, it never let anyone down. Whether you were a seasoned mechanic or a 17-year-old kid building your first project in a garage, the 350 was the smartest, most accessible choice. That's when the name, the People's Engine, truly came to life. Don't let the name, Small Block, fool you. The Chevy 350 is actually a 5.7-liter V8 with a remarkably balanced technical design. And that's the secret behind its legendary status. Under the hood, the 350 uses a 4.0-inch bore and a 3.48-inch stroke, nearly ideal proportions for generating both horsepower and torque. This makes the 350 equally capable of hauling heavy loads like a truck 
or launching hard like a sports car. Depending on the version and production year, the 350 produced anywhere from 145 to over 370 horsepower, with torque reaching up to 380 pound-feet. Impressive numbers for a naturally aspirated engine. Even better, its straightforward, no-nonsense design made repairs, part swaps, and upgrades easy for anyone with a basic tool set. That's why mechanics often call it the friendliest engine in the garage. And if tuned correctly, a 350 can run smoothly for hundreds of thousands of miles without needing a major rebuild. By the 1980s, the 350 engine faced a new kind of enemy. Strict emissions regulations and tougher fuel economy standards. If it wanted to survive, it had to evolve. And Chevy responded by completely changing how the engine received fuel. They introduced Tuned Port Injection, or TPI, a massive leap forward from old-school carburetors. TPI used computer-controlled injectors to deliver precise fuel to each cylinder. Instead of the splash-and-pray method of carburetors, the result? More power, better efficiency, and lower emissions. One of the most memorable versions of the TPI-equipped 350 was the L98, found in late 80s Camaros and Corvettes, making up to 245 horsepower and 345 pound-feet of torque. Those long, elephant-leg-style intake runners boosted low-end torque, making the cars launch hard off the line. TPI didn't just help the 350 survive, it helped this iconic V8 confidently enter the electronic age. The Chevy 350 didn't just dominate the streets, it was also adopted by top marine companies like Mercruiser, Volvo Penta, and Indmar as a go-to power plant for boats. Why? Strength, durability, and ease of maintenance. Of course, surviving the harsh marine environment required key upgrades. The marine version of the 350 came equipped with seawater cooling systems, corrosion-resistant water pumps, anti-rust exhaust manifolds, and custom camshafts tuned for steady RPM cruising. Intake manifolds were often made from marine-grade aluminum, which resisted corrosion and kept performance steady in damp conditions. These improvements helped the Chevy 350 become one of the most popular marine engines of the 80s and 90s. And just like on land, boaters loved the 350 because it was simple, easy to fix, and practically indestructible. After the Chevy 350 proved it could thrive even in harsh environments like open water, a bigger question emerged. Could this engine be pushed even further? The answer didn't come from GM's engineering department. It came from the car enthusiast community. They were the ones who created the 383 Stroker, an unofficial variation powerful enough to write a brand new chapter for the small block family. The idea was simple yet bold. Take a 350 block, swap in a 400 crankshaft, extend the piston stroke, boost torque, and end up with 383 cubic inches. The result? An engine that could take down heavyweight big blocks, but still remained just as upgrade-friendly and reliable as the original. 383 Stroker was never in Chevrolet's plans, but it became so popular that GM eventually released an official crate version, acknowledging the innovation from the streets. As the 383rd Stroker craze swept through garages nationwide, GM realized something important. People didn't just want power, they wanted convenience. And thus, a new trend was born, the crate engine. A crate engine is a pre-assembled, pre-tuned engine you can order, unpack, and bolt directly into your car. No hunting for old parts, no complicated tuning. For millions of car builders, it was a dream come true. A powerful V8, shipped in a wooden crate, ready to breathe new life into your ride. One of the most popular options was the Chevy 
350-290. As the name suggests, 350 cubic inches, producing 290 horsepower. It came with a flat tappet camshaft, cast aluminum pistons, and an 8 to 1 compression ratio, meaning it could run just fine on regular 87 octane fuel. Here's what made it so lovable. With just a few basic upgrades, headers, intake manifold, performance camshaft, you could push it past 330 horsepower without tearing the whole engine apart. Crate engines weren't just convenient. They were a gateway to the world of performance, a place where anyone, seasoned wrench or total newbie, could build their dream machine one bolt at a time. After decades of dominating garages and streets, the 350 engine began to disappear from new vehicles in the late 1990s. For many, this felt like a mystery. How could a power plant so reliable, so beloved, and so upgradable simply fade away? The answer lies in a quiet revolution in the auto industry. Modern performance, stricter emissions regulations, and rising fuel economy standards. Things that the mechanically simple and proudly old school 350 could no longer meet efficiently. Then, in 1997, Chevrolet introduced the next generation, the LS engine family, starting with the LS1. With its lightweight aluminum block, distributorless ignition system, and modern fuel injection, the LS wasn't just stronger, it was cleaner, more efficient, and fully compatible with the 21st century car world. While the 350 remained a trustworthy warrior, it belonged to an older era, one ruled by gears and wrenches. The LS represented the future, smarter, lighter, and able to meet the toughest emissions tests. The Chevy 350 wasn't banned. It simply stepped aside, quietly, but proudly, to let a new generation carry on America's Vive 8 legacy. Although it no longer came in brand new cars, the Chevy 350 never truly disappeared. Instead, it found its second life in the world of aftermarket performance, where passion, creativity, and horsepower have no limits. Here, the 350 didn't just survive, it thrived. No other engine came close in terms of available parts, accessories, and tech resources. From performance cams, aluminum heads, stroker kits, high-rise intakes, to full turbo systems, everything was just a click away. And you didn't need to be a professional mechanic. With a basic set of tools and a bit of patience, anyone could rebuild a 350 or turn it into a fire-breathing 400-horsepower monster. That's why the 350 became the go-to choice for garage builds, restorations, hot rods, drag cars, or simply a young gearhead's first real project. It wasn't just a block of metal that made noise. It was the image of a father and son rebuilding an old Chevy together in the garage. The familiar rumble echoing from small town drag strips. The moment you turned the key for the first time, heard it fire up and realized you built that. The Chevy 350 stood for a time when anyone could learn to wrench, to repair, to modify without needing a laptop or programming skills. It carried the spirit of, if you've got hands and a wrench, you've got what it takes. That's why, more than half a century later, the name Chevy 350 still brings smiles, sparks memories, and makes people want to head back to the garage. From racetracks to parking lots, from family garages to docks, the 350 still roars to life every day as a reminder that simplicity, durability, and passion never go out of style. It wasn't banned. It didn't vanish. It simply entered a new chapter, where every startup is a legacy handed down. If you've ever owned a 350-powered ride, or you're dreaming of restoring one someday, share your story with us. Tell us about that first startup the build you did yourself. 
or just a memory of riding shotgun with your dad. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss more deep dives into engines, classics, and American automotive legends.